Hello everyone and welcome to a new crafting video. Uh, this is part of my A Little Whimsy for the Holiday series. Second video and actually first with a new camera. Uh, so this is the document camera and I'm realizing I've got a little bit of wobble going on and I honestly, I don't know if it's the camera or the table. So hopefully it's not too distracting. What we're going to do today is work off of one of the pieces that we did in the last video, the little plush heart that I did in wool. We are going to take some secondary fabric. I had just a little bit, see these pieces falling around, a little bit of this red plaid wool. And we are going to add that to the hearts. Um, now I'm going to switch over the camera. We'll see how this works as a hand camera. Okay, everyone. So we are going to work off of this basic ornament style from the first video. This showed you three of my favorite techniques. Now this is the one that is simply stitched around the outside and then filled with some polyfill. Of course, I will link the first video down below just in case you missed that. Now I'm using hearts because I love to decorate my tree with hearts. You can use almost any shape you want. The simpler the shape, the easier it's going to be. So I might suggest stars, snowmen, bells, tend to be nice, easy shapes. And you can change them around a little bit. Now to do what we're going to do today, we are going to start with that same basic template, your choice, of course. And we're going to have this be the template to create the base. Okay, but then I want you to take this template and trace it on paper. Okay. Right, I hope this makes sense here. Okay, you trace it out on paper, and then I want you to cut away, I'm going to say about three eighths of an inch around the edge of the whole thing. So that'll give you the base template and your inner template, all right? So you're gonna use your base template to cut out and make your base shape, just like we did in the first step. And then you're going to use your inner shape to cut out your inner material. Now again, you wanna use the same type of material, something type weave that's not gonna fray, so wool, that's been fold or felted, um, felt itself, velvet, something like that. Now you'll notice slight variation from last video to this video. I used pinking shears or pinking scissors to do the edge of my shape, my heart, and then I stitched on each little indent, just a little extra. And that's what I use to cut my red heart as well. I'm going to take my red heart, lay it on top of my filled white heart, move these out of the way. And then I'll be stitching all around with my embroidery floss. Got my scissors. Thread my needle on camera. Okay, so threading my needle on camera, never the easiest thing. 
No, my dear, you have to stay over there, Clara. And Clara is checking out what we're doing. All right. So take your needle, and because you have a knot, come in through the side, through those layers. Oh, and I hope you can see the white. Oh, okay. Lesson learned there. This camera will shine out the white. My lights are not that bright. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's the way I wanted the heart. Let's turn this heart around. Just subtle differences. There we go. I'm going to be aiming for stitching at each indent here. Simply a top stitch. So come out on the red, down through my white, and then up through the red. See that? All right. And just keep repeating that. Now the document camera that I purchased is called an InSwan. It had high recommendations. Though it is one that is completely new to me, I'm accustomed to working with an IPVO. I do like most of what I see so far. Um, it's a lightweight camera, advantages and disadvantages there. Nice long cord. Uh, one of my concerns was that I was going to need to use the software. Nope, I was able to plug and play right directly through the camera software in my laptop. And right now I'm recording directly onto Wii Video. One problem is the camera does not rotate on this version. I could have sworn the listing said that it did. So when the camera is upright facing me, I am actually upside down and I will need to rotate myself inside of the video editing software. And now we are learning that we do have that little wobble happening which what I think it is, is the fact that I am working on a 150, 180 year old table that has had a rough life, no Clara? This table was one I found in New Mexico and it was incredibly dried out. Um, to the point where when it came back to New York with us, it gained weight. It rehydrated and, and gained weight. I actually wish we would have measured it to get an accurate idea of how much weight it truly gained. I was able to pick this table up at the yard sale I found it at. I literally did a U-turn in the middle of a highway because I saw it in their driveway. Um, but I was able to pick this table up, turn it upside down, and pop it in my car like it was nothing. It was that dried out. And back here in New York, I cannot lift this by myself. Yes, part of that is me now being out of shape. Not nearly as strong as I used to be but it is a matter of how much weight this table has gained. The good table. There are so many nails and screws in this thing though. I was just excited to actually find a 19th century antique where I was. So what I think is happening is she's got a lot of wobble. Uh, she actually has some additional support structure um, called a bungee cord, <laughs> holding parts of her together under her tablecloth. Um, so I think even my wobbling of the table is amplified through the neck of the camera, and the camera is going with it. So um, I'm not sure how much you can see. 
please let me know in the comments if it is an issue. I, I'm not sure what I'll do, but I'll try to come up with something. I don't know if I'd have to like clamp the camera to a stand. Oops. Oops. Can't have that. I've made a mistake. Let's go back. And I kind of frayed my wool a little in the process. There we go. I, I, I moved too far in my stitch. And it was not going to work for me. There we go. Teddy bears also make good shapes. Stockings, boots, simple bauble shaped bells, um, bauble shaped balls. That's what I'm going for. There we go. And for this last one, I'm just going to come up where I started come back down through and come over to the edge. Because these are ornaments and they shouldn't be tussled, I don't usually knot off on a lot of things. If it's like a bead or something that I think will fall off, then of course I'll knot. Um, but in this case, just stitching back through seems to work out nicely. Now what I can do is take my last little bit of string here Come back up to the top. Make myself a little pass through the top. And I can have a little loop. There we go. And I don't know if these will be the final little loops. Because I do have a couple ribbons. So this is... A polka dotted ribbon which I don't I don't I like the polka dots with the white and red I'm not so sure with the plaid the black plaid I thought I had bought the white and um, red and white stripes I had so many ribbons in my um, basket that day I guess I did not now this one I could have sworn was more red. I guess I grabbed a burgundy version. Ooh. Okay, so this is not what I thought this was. Um, so I bought this really awesome red suede stuff, and I thought I'd grab two rolls of that. So this is definitely not going to work for this, but this is a nifty ribbon. It's... Is it technically ribbon? So I have this thing ribbon by definition in the 19th century has salvages on both sides so in my mind a cut item which is actually what this is this is cut on the very edge a cut item i don't know if this will work my hand Can we focus not quite um a cut ribbon those are air quotes there um, is not technically ribbon. Um, all the bias strips, not technically ribbon. Um, this will be okay for some sort of other craft. It just doesn't quite work with this one. Um, so in my mind, the perfect ribbon is actually not here. So we will just go with the little stringies. Uh, but yeah, the ribbon would be fine. Uh, if I had some narrower twill tape, that actually can make a really cute kind of rustic primitive look I enjoy that now I have this shape heart but of course you can go freehand for some of your shapes and get really creative uh, these two are designed to hang from their sides Try that again um, but I think they nest in really nice, a little longer and slender one. And then I'll be doing a wider fat one soon. So this will make a cute little set.
for the tree. Current intention, these are for my tree. Um, I really like how they're coming out. I, I do enjoy putting the second material on the base material. Uh, if you wanted to go a little further with your embellishment, uh, if you had larger pinking shears, you could actually do dots at each little curve. Uh, you could do, again, the date or initials or a word inside of your shape. Uh, you could do that on the reverse as well. Lots of options. Oh, what you could do is do different sizes and hang them from each other. That makes a really cute ornament option. Actually, if you did um, three or four consecutive sizes, um, starting even larger, that would make a really pretty uh, door decoration in lieu of a wreath. Uh, that would be really cute, I think. Or you could put them on a wreath. So lots of options. I hope you enjoyed this video, second in the series. And I will see you soon for another project. Thank you all.